I'm not sure if you've like gotten wind of like the the beautiful storm sweeping the planet right now, but it is all about this. Okay. <laughs> maybe you recognize this, maybe you don't. But our next guest here is the author of this book. We're talking about Brian Proctor, who has read, uh, who's Bob Proctor's son, and he wrote this book all about growing up with his dad, Bob Proctor. So next we're going to be, um, there he is, Brian. Hey. How are you, my friend? I'm good, Tommy. I'm really good. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. It's so good to see you. You too. So um, Karen's going to, have a little jam session here with Brian. So let's Hello, do it. Hello, Brian. Where is she? There she is. Hi, there Karen. I am. Hello. <laughs> Boy, it's good to see you. It's so good to see you. Oh my goodness. I don't think people realize, Brian, that when the big C closed um, borders, there was a paradigm of where we would see each other every three months, you know, and then that was gone. And I, and I, you know, people talk about that being separated from their family and for me that was what it was like not being able to see you and Corey and bob and everyone so regularly so it's so good to have you on today and thank you so much for joining us to talk about your brand new book my father knew the secret launching on july 5th thank you for joining us well thank you i appreciate the invite yeah it's great to be here so good. Now we are just going to share my uh, link. Uh, it's an affiliate link um, to go and buy the book. Uh, my father knew the secret. It officially launches on July 5th. But as we know, the universe loves speed. So it's out now and you can go and pick it up. And we want to spend some time with you to share us. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the book and um, about Bob growing up with Bob. So what 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 would you say Give us a little insight, you know, some really fond memories of growing up with Bob. I saw you shared a beautiful photo of you with your father on the front step of your house. Tell us about some of the memories growing up with Bob. Well, you know, it's, it, they're all great. That's the, that's the really nice thing. Um, you know, for those of you that don't know, uh, my father and I had a really, I think a really special relationship. I mean, obviously he was my father, but, but more than that, we were really close friends, uh, business partners for years. Um, and, uh, you know, my father and I, we would chat every day, God knows how many times, five, six times a day. I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty constant. And he was, he was a great father. Um, and it was fun kind of posting that picture today. Cause it's, I, I, I was digging through, um, old photographs when I was putting my website together and I came across that one. And, as soon as I saw it, it just brought back such great memories when I was young. You know, I, I just looking at that particular picture, I see him with his arm wrapped around me and, and holding on. Just, you know, he was he was always that way. He was uh, he was a tremendous father. Um, you know, for for everybody that's seen him on stage or on video, um, he was he was who you saw. Um, he mm. was like that in private life too. He was he was really a special man and. Mm. I had a lot of fun putting this book together, Karen. It was, it was probably four years in the making. So dad knew I was writing it. Um, and when I first started, I didn't have a clue what I was going to call the book. Um, but I just knew it was all the stories, all the lessons, things I've learned from dad, right from when I was a little kid up till 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a lot of fun putting it together. It was great when he was around because we would we would talk, you know, we, we were early morning people. Um, so we would usually talk at five, six in the morning, um, just about every day. And, uh, you know, we would, we would talk about different things from the past and different experiences that we had. And it was, it was really cool bouncing ideas off of him, um, around different ideas, bouncing ideas. And, um, so it made it a lot of fun for those first few years as I was writing it. Mm. And he, he always said to me, he says, Brian, don't rush this, take your time. And I, I even put it in the book. I said, I think he knew he wasn't going to be here when that book came out, which is really yeah. kind of tough in itself. But um, the title for the book, interestingly enough, came to me in the middle of the night. Um, I was dreaming about my father. And then I wake up at three in the morning and this title was like burned into my head. And it was so vivid that I had to actually get up and go and write it down. Cause I, you know, you, you know, sometimes you middle of the night, you could forget some of these things that are going on. Mm. And uh, it was like, wow, it was, you know, just 
heaven sent, I guess. You know, it, did it, you was this after Bob passed away or before it was after he passed away. away? So it was almost yeah. like he was helping you. I, I really feel he Title. was. I mean, you know, we hold all kinds of beliefs around that, but I I, I really feel that he was. Um I would have loved for him to be here knowing it and seeing the actual book, but I, I know he sees it in whatever way he does. And yeah, um, it was, it was a lot of fun putting it together. And you said that when um, I read somewhere uh, you, you took a, did you take a break from writing the book towards the end of when Bob was not so well and you were spending a lot more time with him and how long did it take for you to pick it back up again? Well, it, it, you know, the last six months of his life, I spent a lot of the time up in Toronto uh, with he and his wife, Linda, um, just kind of helping him. Um, mm. We didn't know in the it, the first little bit that it was going to be as bad as it was. And um, so I wrote a little bit then, but then when things got really bad, I kind of stopped and just did whatever I could to, you know, take care of dad and, and do mm. what I could. Um, it, when he passed, it was it was tough. Um mm you know, real, really tough. Um, I don't want to give a lot of energy to that. It gets me in, a, it's just, yeah. but it, it took me, it took me a, a good two to three months before I could even think about writing again. Um, it was yeah. really, really hard. And the first thing I wrote when I did start writing again was that first chapter. Um, I just thought that really needed to be said um, so for those of you that don't know, if you haven't got the book yet, the, book yet. Uh, the, the, the first chapter is really all about uh, my father's last days um, and what he was like and how he treated everybody around him. It was just, mm -hmm. it was beyond incredible. And that was the true proof of the man. He was, yeah. you know, he was incredibly uncomfortable. He was in a lot of pain and he still treated everybody around him like uh, they were the most important person in the room. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was really special. So that's, that was the first thing I wrote when I started again. It's uh, interesting that you say that, Brian, because we just had Hina Khan and Gina Hayden on before mm -hmm. you. And I asked them what was a lesson that they will carry in their heart and soul from Bob. And they both said effectively the same thing, the impression of increase, right. that the good that I give to others, A, doesn't need to come back to the to, from the person that I gave it to and leaving everyone better than you found them. And Bob was he really he he was that he was what we all saw on the screen behind closed doors yes he really was yeah yeah i i, I will say i think i have so many lessons and the book really covers a lot of it um you know as i said i took my time on this book it's it's kind of meaty it's 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 not a little thin book it's 360 pages um and so i i, I really got into a lot of the lessons but i, I can I can pretty clearly say that probably the most important lesson I got from dad was that the impression of increase. And it really was about making everybody you come in contact feel better because they were in contact with you that day. And my God, if you can do that with everybody that you're in contact with, you're going to live a fabulous life and you're going to attract great things into your life, you know, because absolutely. people will want to deal with you. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Totally. Tell us, Brian, how, has the way your relationship with Bob, your father, impacted your relationship with your own children? What have you carried on with your own children that was really given to you through your relationship with your dad? Well, it's, it's, uh, that's a great question. It's funny. I, I, I often hear my father speaking through me when I talk <laughs> to my kids, you know, um, because there are things before you go on, there are things that he taught me that he did with you that I do with my children. So we can talk oh, about that another day. Yeah. So I'm interested what, how you have, that has shaped your parenting because it's shaped my parenting, your relationship. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell the story real quick, uh, you know, about when I was, when I was young. Um, and some of you have probably heard this before, but it is well worth repeating. Um, when I was little, um, the one thing I remember the most was dad always tucked me into bed. It was always, he was the one that wanted to tuck me into bed. And every night when he put me into bed, he would, he would have me lay down, lay on my back and he would sit on the side of the bed and he'd put his hand on my chest and he just made that physical connection. And he would start to talk about all the great things that were happening in my life. Uh, all the good things that were happening that day. And even if there was something that wasn't great, he would find a way to see the good in it, which was really kind of cool. Um, 
And then he would end this, our, our little prayer session, I guess, if you want to call it that, uh, he would end it by saying, you know, Brian, you are capable of being, having, or doing anything you want in this life. You're going to wake up in the morning. You're going to have great sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you're going to have a big smile on your face and feel wonderful. And that's, that's what he did with me every night. And I think back to that, I think, wow, what a great way of building my self-image, quite frankly. And so when I had my kids, um, my kids are in their 30s now, they're grown. Uh, I actually have a couple of grandchildren, which is really cool. Um, but when I had my kids, I, I did something very similar with them. Um, I would tuck them in every night and I put my hand on, on their chest and I started telling them stories uh, with them in it. And I, I made them kind of superheroes in the stories. And I built them up to be strong, powerful kids. And mm. the great thing, Karen, was even through teenage years, I often hear a parent, and I've had friends that have had kids that they've struggled with through teenage years and, and, and at different times. I have never had any struggles with, with either of my kids, um, mm. both incredible kids, um, very, very kind. Um, they both share that impression of increase that my father taught me and and both he and me you know taught them um i i, I believe you've met danny um yeah. and and you know my kids are just the epitome of that which yeah. is it's heartwarming as a father yeah and, and your daughter's a, a nearly a celebrity model isn't she she is yeah. a celebrity model <laughs> yeah she she's um she's, she's really amazing. special too she she yeah. was uh and and she has two two kids now, two young kids, and she's doing that with her kids. Yeah. And I watch the way my daughter parents her kids and how kind she is and how gentle and loving she is and how much she encourages them. Um, you know, there's there's never any doubt the love that's there. There's no question mm -hmm. about any of that. And it's mm -hmm. uh, it's really wonderful seeing that, you know, it's mm -hmm. and that's something I talk about in the book. I, I just think that's we need more of that in the world. Let's put it that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And you i may or may not have told it that's exactly what i do with my children so that, that's mm -hmm. i got that from bob telling that story about you conversations we've had and ever since louis was ever since they were born even before they were born um bob gave me a meditation about you know talking to the baby and from the moment that they were born i started that habit as well and it has continued with both of them and reading to them and reading thomas troward to them and you know, just all of that, but particularly that habit at night, same thing. I sit on the edge of the bed, put my hand on them, talk mm -hmm. to them about them, their own self-image, how great they're doing. Um, it's just what we do. We even do yeah. Bob's meditation at night, Brian. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> kids love it. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. So tell us, what is your, what legacy do you want to create um, now? Um, sort of, I guess, for Bob, from what you've learned from your father, but also with this book, what legacy well, this, do you want to create? You know, the, the reason for this book was really to create a, a, a unique kind of legacy for my father. Um, you know, this book is, I, I've said before, it's not about me. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I have no issues promoting it, talking about it. It's really about my father. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just filled with personal insights and lessons that I learned as a son. And I, I see this book as really showing, especially Bob's audience, um, you know, what he was like as a father mm. uh, and as a, as a personal person, not, not the man on the stage. Mm. Um, so I think it really shows, uh, shows that in a different light, um, mm. which is really nice and a unique take. Um, you know, my wife, Corey, she always said, Brian, you're the only one that can write this book because you are the only one. Yeah. And, and, and it, it felt, it felt right. Um, so I really see this book as being part of that legacy. Uh, I think a way of spreading a message of who Bob Proctor was that nobody really saw other than me, my brother and my sister, of course, but, uh, um, you know, I'm the one that also worked with him for over 30 years. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, I, I feel really good about it, Karen. I'm I, I'm really proud of of what I put together, and uh, and I've I've designed it in such a way that you can really open it up anywhere and just start reading, mm -hmm. and you'll get a lesson, you'll get you'll get a story. Which is also, you know, it's it's the fact that you've done it like that is is symbolic because that's what Bob did. He right. didn't believe you had to start at the beginning. 
you know, any chapter, pick it up, study it, harvest the good from it. So the fact that you've actually written it is also testament to Bob. Yeah, I mean, I I certainly feel I wrote it in his, I don't know, kind of his way, um, for sure. Um, mm. Like it, everything about it feels right to me. It just feels mm. right. Mm. Was there any part of the book where you um, you didn't know how to say it or you were stuck with it and then you had a breakthrough moment, like the clarity just came or you had a moment besides the title of the book? Like tell us, um, yeah, was there any part of the book where you needed, you weren't sure and then you had a breakthrough that came to you or guidance? I, I can't speak to a specific part, but I can tell you there was definitely moments um, like that. and you'll get a kick out of this because you know, Corey, um, you know, my wife edited the book. Where is she, by the way? <laughs> uh, she's downstairs doing something. I'm not sure. <laughs> Next time we'll get her on as well. Next time. Um, but Corey edited the book for me. And um, again, it was one of those things that was just meant to be because Corey also knows my father so well, mm. and she knows me so well. She knows both of our voices. And when I was stuck, I would bounce ideas off of her um, and she would give me ideas on, hey, why don't you write a story about this or about that moment? Um, she'd see what I wrote and she says, well, what about if you add this and and this part of whatever situation that happened and, and I add a little more. So I look at it like I almost built the house and Corey decorated it. Um, you know, she kind of really brought color to the stories um, and really helped make it even more special than, than what it was. Mm. So beautiful. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put an extra question in here quickly for you, because I know we have a lot of, um, a, a, this often comes up around relationships and changing relationships. So you, you and Corey met in the period that I have known you, um, mm -hmm. the last eight or nine years. What, what was Bob's philosophy or on relationships or new relationships, um, letting go of old, you know, sort of allowing yourself to move on and fall in love with yourself again or fall in love again. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, he, he was so great with you, with Corey and just, yeah, both of you. What, what, what did you learn from him about love again? Well, you know, number one, my father loved Corey, um, <laughs> which certainly makes it easy. <laughs> um, but how could She's you She's easy to love. Yeah, yeah, she really is. You know, Dad always had a statement, and this stuck with me from as far back as I can remember. And I love this statement. He says, you can't change the time you got out of bed this morning. What is in the past is in the past. You can't, you can't change it. And yes, I've, I've had some bad relationships in the past. I've had some hurt. I've had a lot of angst. Um, and he taught me how to forgive that. Like, I can't change it. So he really taught me how to forgive it and to not only forgive others that have done things, but to forgive myself for what I put myself through in certain tasks as well. Um, and I actually, I, I write about that in, in a little bit more detail. Um, that was a great conversation I had with him all, all around forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, we only live in the present moment. That's why I put it, I put an hourglass. I, I, so yeah, on the book, cover. I've got an hourglass on there. Mm -hmm. And I don't even talk about the hourglass in the book. Yeah, it's kind of, just it's something I've always thought who my father was and he says all we have is this one moment when that sand is going through we just have the present moment the past the sand that's gone through is already done it's over with there's nothing we can do to change it and the sand that still has to come is our future which we you know we can certainly do things to dictate where our future holds but we don't know what all is going to take place there the only thing we truly have control over is the here and now right now and he always taught me that if you live in the present moment, everything you do, live in that present moment, you will get more accomplished. You will be able to love stronger. And, and, and as that's, that's where it comes into with, with relationships. If you can let go of the past mm -hmm. and really embrace the moment. And, you know, if you're in a marriage, just really find new ways to love that person you're with. Um, if you're not and you're looking for somebody, just be present. Um, and that was, that was it. It was really kind of simple, uh, when you think about it, but how often we get ourselves trapped in this revolving loop of stuff that's happened in our past, 
um, and we hang on to it and it actually forms part of our identity. Um, mm. It's a terrible way to live. And, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate that dad was the one who kind of taught me how to not let that control who you are. Mm. It was always every day you wake up, you're a new person. It's a new day. What can you do today? Um, and, you know, that's, that's kind of where it was at. And, and, you know, Corey and I, we just, we just embrace the moment. We really did. And we live in every moment. Um, so beautiful. It's yeah. so good. So what would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned from your father in your heart and soul? It is, it is you. I, I would have to go back to the impression of increase, um, is probably the biggest lesson. Um, and right along with it is to really, truly love, um, mm -hmm. you know, really love who you are. Um, that always taught me about self-love is how important that was. If you ever seen him on the stage, you know, it's, I always laugh when he would, he would kiss himself. I know. So you have to love yourself first. Yeah. And it's true. You know, we don't all do that. Um, so I would say the other thing is, is just to truly love, love everybody you're with, you know, and, and when he talked about impression of increase, you can find something good about everybody. Um, I realize there's people in this world that are negative that you don't want to be around, but sometimes you're forced to be in their presence. Um, if you search hard enough, you can find something positive about that person and just focus on that. And then, you know, obviously get away, but he, he always taught me to always deal with love in everything and with everybody you're you're with um and that was you know i i remember actually saying that gosh i was in my late 20s so it's a little while ago um i was selling real estate at the time and i was booked uh dad actually had me booked to speak at a big sales conference for um chorus entertainment which owned all the radio stations across canada and i spoke to the salespeople. And I was doing really, really well at real estate and sales. So, you know, I knew I could, I could help them with their sales. And I'll never forget, I stood up there and I said to them, I said, everybody you're in front of, who you're selling, who you have to talk to, to try to do, you know, sell your advertising space and everything, just look at them with love, feel love going to them. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, they looked at me like I was nuts. Um, they just... They thought that was kind of crazy, um, but I just carried through with it because that really is it. It's, it is. it's it's just, if you can give that loving energy to everybody you're speaking with, my God, think of, think of the power that you will have. And that's it. Yeah. And if you're dealing with it with love, you're going to do the right thing for them as well. Mm -hmm. You can't do mm -hmm. it if you're, if you don't have that that sense of feeling about you. So those those are probably the two big things that uh, that I got from impression of increase in love. Beautiful. And what last but not least, what did writing this book do for you? How did you feel writing this book or what what did it do for you? We know that it's about your father and it's his putting something down for him, but what about for you Brian? What did it do for you? Well, number 1 it was really good to get it out and written. Um, it just felt really good, especially after dad was gone. Um, mm -hmm. It just felt good to put it into paper. Um, you know, at, at seminars and everything, everybody always asked me, what's it like having Bob Proctor as a father? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's wonderful, but I, you know, how, how do you, how do you encapsulate that? Well, this book is really it. Um, and it gave me an opportunity to really share everything about my father. Um, so you know, it was, it was just a really good thing for me to do that way. Mm -hmm. The other thing it's doing for me is I, I think, you know, Karen, I was never big for getting on stage or jumping on calls like this and, and putting myself out there. I kind of like being behind the scenes. Um, but this, I, I want to get this book out so badly because I know that it will help people. They're going to see things in there that will change their life. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's causing me to I'm I'm going on speaking engagements I'm getting on stage I'm doing podcasts I am doing all kinds of things that quite frankly I was never comfortable doing, no. um, but I'm willing to do to get this message out. Yeah, that's that's a it's a, so it's a good stretch for me personally. Yeah, and it comes back to really what we learned from Bob around goals and C type goals that 
it when it becomes part of you you do you just you are you know and it's not do i want to or not it's what is the work this book is asking of me what is the work of getting this out there and you just you release yourself to it it's like you release right. yourself to the book to the goal to the legacy and so it is done that is it and you know dad always said you need to have a goal that you have no idea how you're going to achieve mm. um, that inspires you but you don't know how you're going to do it because if you know how to do it it's not going to inspire you that much it might for a short period of time but not a long time and i have big goals with this book that i have no idea how i'm going to pull it off but it's inspiring me and it's causing me to step out and do things I would not normally do. And that, that would, I mean, dad would love that because that's what it's all about. He, he liked it when, when somebody had a goal that they would step out and do things they would never normally do. That is where our growth comes in. That's, that's where change happens for us. And uh, so it's, it's been a really good thing for me that way. It's so good. Well, if you haven't already clicked the link, please go and order um, Brian's book, Bob's book. I guess it's it's both <laughs> of you in a lot of ways. Um, get your hands on it. Get it shipped. Uh, it officially launches on July 5th. So tell your family and friends about it as well. Buy multiple copies. Bob would always say, don't just buy one copy, buy a second copy and give it away. Such an easy way to spread increase. We actually had somebody today buy 55 copies. That's my favorite number. Um, I love it. All right. We're going to buy 55 copies to give to their clients. I think there's 55 people um, registered for our this uh, client summit. So we'll hopefully be the next 55. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So well, good. I, I promise you, um, you will love the book. And I can say that without, you know, just just because of what it's about. Um, I know you will love it. And I know you'll have friends and family that will love it. Even if they didn't know who Bob was, uh, nice. the lessons you'll you'll find in here they are life-changing. Um, they've mm -hmm. changed my life. I live a wonderful life because of everything I learned from my dad and, uh, and I put it all, put it all in it. Yeah. Thank you. So good. We can't wait. Thank you, Brian. We're going to get you back again soon and do this again, but I want to thank you so much for joining us today for our mindset to manifest summit and to share your story and the book with us and the opportunity for everyone to hear directly from you and order their own copies. So thank you for coming today. Thanks very much, Karen. I appreciate it. Thank Let's you. give a big hand for Brian Proctor. For more life-changing content, click subscribe. Here's to the better version of you.